Underrated sweet, Skittles. Let me know if you guys think Skittles are one of the best sweets ever made in the comment section below. Sour Patch. Sour Patch. Sour Patch Kids are also great. Yeah, Sour Patch. And the Sour Wine Gums. Ooh. Incredible. Oh. So guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our build. Now in this episode, in the last episode, you guys saw us do a bit of a technical build. We did a lot of welding, a lot of repairing. We spoke about what we had to do, the technicalities of this build. And I'm still yet to convince you of why, why I love these things. We're still working through the nonsense and trying to get this thing up to scratch. Um, and that's what today's episode is going to be. Again, we're going to have another technical episode. I did say in the last episode, I hope to get this thing running. And one of the biggest concerns we have with a TD5 conversion into a TDI is that the fuel lines of a TDI are insufficient in compared to a TD5. Now, a TD5 requires a lot more fuel, has a lot more higher fuel pressure, and so you need to change all the fuel lines. So we're gonna have to take all the fuel line out of this vehicle, which is all this hard line plastic stuff, it's all 30 years old. We're gonna be getting rid of that, and we're gonna be running R7 rated cotton braid fuel hose, specifically for diesel. Uh, it does petrol as well, but we've had them before where you don't get an R7 rated, which is a higher pressure, and they can swell up under the load of a good fuel pump. Now this will be running a standard TD5 fuel pump. I don't want any issues, and so I'm gonna pull out all the fuel line and put in this lovely cotton braided stuff. So that's one of our first jobs. What you guys just saw a moment ago was us just welding up the rest of that tank bracket. As I showed you in the last episode, the A-frame cross member was rotten. It was, um, it was a slight, not difficult repair, but it was a little bit fiddly. You had to kind of bend the bracket out of the way, replace that section, remake those little hanger, the bits with the tank butts into, then put the bracket back up. We kind of installed the tank, got it all back, and now it's all perfect, which is fantastic. Um, so that's one job ticked off. Now we still have the boot floor on the sides to do. We'll do that in a later episode. You guys will see how we're gonna do that. But my focus is trying to get this thing running. Now, annoyingly, those fuel connectors still have not turned up and I'm hoping I'll get them by Monday, but I'm conscious you guys need something to view on your Saturday or Sunday. So I'm gonna get you an episode which is gonna be a bit more technicalities. What I want to do today is to get that fuel line out, get our fuel line installed. I have got our fuel filter and initially I was gonna mount our fuel filter head in a Defender TD5 place, which is back behind the offside rear wheel arch. Actually, Matt's come up with a better idea. Young Matt, he recommended we actually just try and fit the TD5 filter head in the original TDI Defender, TDI Discovery fuel filter location, which is actually on the bulkhead of a Disco One. Um, I think those two holes will be the same, so we could actually end up with a, again, another OEM modification where if someone goes to service this thing looking at it at Discovery One, the fuel filter's where they know where it is, you don't have to drill any holes in the chassis, it is OEM, blah, blah, blah. So, that could be really nice if we can get that mounted up there. I don't know if the TD5 engine is going to be in the way. If not, it's not a massive issue. We can just relocate it, but it would be nice if we can get this thing as OEM as possible. That is my focus for this vehicle. I want this thing to be as OEM as possible. And the fact that this engine mounted up in an OEM location with the exhaust hangers mounted up and sitting correct makes me think that perhaps at one point in Land Rover's history, they decided to potentially facelift this Disco 1 with a TD5 engine, then decided to scrap it and go for a Disco 2. Not quite sure what happened, but it's fitting absolutely perfect. And I just want to continue that theme of true excellence, if you will. So, uh, I don't know if there's fuel connectors, but we can get a lot of this stuff done. We need to get the standalone, en uh, standalone engine harness fitted. I need to take the AC compressor off so we can convert it back to uh, just a basic engine because this one does not have aircon. Um, I need to fit the starter motor. I need to fit a whole host of goodies. So it's gonna be another great episode, grab a drink. And also, you're probably wondering why there is a BMW over there. We are starting another BMW build. And in our quest for excellence, we are now savaging vehicles left, right, and center. And I feel quite bad about it actually, because this is a really, really nice estate. I've driven it. We've done 500 miles in the car. And it's the only way we can guarantee these things now. It just, uh, you know, reliability, longevity, blah, blah, blah. It makes much sense to grab a whole car that we know we've got all the service history for, everything's documented, and we can physically test it in the vehicle before pulling it, transplanting it to BMW, and we won't have any of the problems we found previously where we've had to replace the high pressure fuel pump because it's been sitting around, blah, blah, blah. So, a bit of a shame, actually, but Kieran's, Kieran, the car that Kieran was on that you guys have been watching, by the way, the TD5 that he's done, it's pretty much done, so it's actually now at the paint shop, fantastic news. And Kieran is itching to get on with something else, so he has been tasked to pull the whole running gear and everything that we're going to be needing for this conversion out of this 330D estate E90 or E91, I can't remember what it is. Um, fairly low mileage, great condition, runs absolutely sweet. So a bit, bit shame really to pull it out of these cars and you know potentially scrap this vehicle, but 
If anybody's looking for a 330D without any engine and gearbox, please let me know, because we've got one here, which is um, up for grabs, essentially. Um, interior's sweet as well, it's all electric, it's a bit of a shame. But it absolutely goes like a rocket ship, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be living a better life in a Defender. This was an old boy who had it, it's all banged up a little bit, the bumpers and stuff like that, but engine and gearbox, fantastic, full service history, the whole lot. Anyway, back on with what we're interested in, which is the Disco One. So, um, I'll stop babbling, grab a drink, let's get going. Guys, it's a bit of a, it's a bit nasty all this welding on the Discovery One, but if you don't want any nasty surprises, make sure you check out Car Vertical. If you're thinking about buying a car or your friends buying a car, make sure you check out Car Vertical. They check over 20 countries. They give you all the mileage lineup graphs. It's an amazing service and an amazing portal. And in some cases, they even come up with some of the crash pictures that when it would have been auctioned off at the car auction website. So I've got quite an interesting report here about a Discovery that's been stolen recovered. So guys, this discovery is quite interesting because it looks like they have a, it's come up on Car Vertical that it has been stolen. Not our one that we're working on, but this discovery I'm showing you has been stolen. Car Vertical have found it, that it's all been stolen, it's all been logged. It's amazing because potentially this car's already up for sale and you just think if you didn't know that information, it would just be gutting to find out if the car's been damaged or anything like that. So do make sure you guys are checking any cars. This car, I've ran this check, everything is 100%. It's never been stolen in every other country, the mileage all lines up, all the MT history is all there. Mad service. Huge thanks to Car Vertical. Please, guys, go check them out. Using my discount code below, you save, save yourself a nice bit of cash at the website, the checkout. So, huge thanks to Car Vertical. Please go and check them out if you're going to go and buy a car, friends buying a car, family member. Check them out, and we'll get back on with the video. So, guys, disaster already. That's where the original TDI fuel filter mounted, but obviously, we didn't hear this gargantuan inlet sitting in the way. And now, look, it just won't go. But those bolt holes are identically spaced, so we might mount it upside down, cut a hole in the bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> That's so annoying. Where can this now live? Yeah, Realistically, it's have to. I don't want it on the inner wing. I, I mean, know, that does that I, does that, that's not offensive, that. but I, it's too high up. Uh, it's annoying because it wants to go next to the turbo, but there's no way fuel, yeah, fuel, yeah, heat, and fuel yeah. don't mix very well. They're not the best of friends. Um, where can you see, Kieran? Tiny the wing. I don't, I really want this to be kind of there. Yeah, kind of Why can't that fit there? That is, it, it, it sat there. Sorry, that. There's some space over the other side, yeah, but do you know what I mean? It can't be near the turbo. Especially with the downpipes in. Imagine if you had a fuel leak. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> it well, can't go in the bulkhead. It can't go in the bulkhead. It needs to. I mean, it, it can go on the inner chassis like, like a Defender. The only other thing, mm, no, I that think too, we, that'd be too much work. I think we have to cut a big hole in side of the car there, move the whole engine over just so that we can fit this. Sounds good. <laughs> it's going to have to go on the chassis, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to Oh, that's such be... a shame. Once you try but going off of that up in the rear, the rear wheel well. Rear wheel well. Like a Defender. The thing is, there's no fuel, there's no, there's there's no cradle, is there? Because it's no. not supposed to be there. That would work, though, but then is that, that feels very it's vulnerable. It's exposed. Yeah. Burning it's a Defender. That's exactly Does what it hang this low, though? That feels no, it's guarded. Because think about it as well, with 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 the wheels on it, our trailing, I don't like it. our trailing arm's going to sit yeah, probably about here, isn't it? I don't so. like that. That's a bit annoying that we can't get the Disco one position for a fuel filter. Next thing, defend the Disco two style. Now, obviously, we have a number of defenders, and we have got a Disco two on site. So let's go see where it is. Hello. 
it is. So Disco 2 has a bracket welded on and it sits slightly at an angle behind the rear spring. This has been converted, by the way, and it sits at about a 45 degree angle. So we can weld on a bracket and mock that, mock that up identically. And that's where our filter will sit. So we've got a little bit done since we've last seen you with the fueling lines. Kieran's got a little bit done as well. His car is uh, no more. Whole front end is missing. He's taking the radiator off. We're getting ready to pull the engine and the automatic gearbox on that one. And check this out. It's a little bit sneaky. Shh, have a look at this. But have a look at this. The old sedimenter, the old water sedimenter off the 300 TDI was mounted above the A-frame. Now we have taken that and we've made our own. It bolted straight up fuel filter mount it's not going to touch the diff totally out the way absolutely perfect we don't have to modify the car in any way we don't have to weld a bracket on or make anything up and it sits there very happily what you've also seen me do there is make up the fuel lines clip them in the original p clips they're a little bit tighter than usual so i'm hoping that one will run if not we'll just swap it out i've had to get rid of the rest of all the p clips but we've run all the fuel lines in the factory way the original factory lines had a bit of conduit here that went over just here you can see it's down the floor there we had a bit of conduit so it stepped around that section so we'll probably protect that somehow we've got to get some p-clips anyway and p-clips all up but all of this now runs up to the fuel pressure regulator and the fuel cooler like a factory car so the fueling system is done just waiting for those fuel connectors so i can properly connect it all up um but that was pretty straightforward so guys, it's the next day and we've had a delivery. We've had some of our fuel connectors. We haven't had all of them. This is annoying. We don't have the straight connectors which are gonna go into our intense pump, but we do have the all important connections like the Land Rover factory connections, the push to fit, the clip ones that go onto the fuel filter head, the fuel cooler, all the other fuel systems. We can get all of these done this morning. But the first thing I wanna do is to get this vehicle converted back to having non air con. So I have a standard belt here. I just need to remove the AC pump from this, remove the belt, remove the Vista span, replace it with a regular belt. That's that done. After that, I want to install an EGR delete. I don't want the exhaust gas recirculation valve to block up the cylinder head to give it any kind of uh, diesel particulate fumes or any sort of coking up of the inlet. I want this thing to last as long as possible, so I'm going to be fitting an EGR delete. After that, we can then move on to fitting our fuel clips and then we can fit our standalone harness and potentially wire this thing up so we can hear the ignition cycling, make sure it's speaking to the engine. And the ECU has been reworked. It has been de-immobilized. It is now a standalone um, ECU, so it's not looking for any of the rest of the body. It's just looking for the engine harness. As soon as it gets a yes from that, we can turn the key for the ignition barrel once we've wired it to the ignition barrel and um, we can potentially get it cranking. So first things first, let's get the AC pump off, get this belt fitted and then the EGR delete.
So guys, we've got rid of our nasty EGR valve. We've blanked it off. We're trying to simplify this engine as much as possible. Kieran has also got rid of the BMW and replaced it with a new shiny Defender 110 with a very poorly engine. He's gonna be switching that out. We're gonna be doing another BMW conversion, hence the vehicle. So um, I put on the shorter belt that you saw. I'm just waiting for an idler pulley. I forgot there's an idler pulley that replaces the aircon pump, so we can't put that on just yet. But uh, now we're gonna jump onto a standalone harness and I'm gonna make Kieran do it only because I wanna get some good quality footage of how these little things plug in. This is a full engine harness and it's all labeled up and we've even got some instructions about what these are. So we've got things like the map sensor, the starter motor, uh, the injection loom, the ECU, and we've chosen to mount the ECU in a Discovery 2 position, which is near the battery, just on the back side of the battery on this side of the inner wing. Now we are changing the inner wings, but we're gonna mount this up just so we can get this test driven. Also, how crazy is this? The standalone harness uh, doesn't give you the plug for the TD5 fuel pump. And I ordered it from Lamar, it was 100 quid, and it doesn't come pinned. Now pinned means that it's actually already laid out. The BMW that was just sitting there was 2005. Uh, the TD5 that this came out of, and TD5s in general, were around the same age that BMW owned Land Rover. Would you believe it? We cut it off the BMW 330D. It's even pinned correctly for the TD5 pump. It clicks straight in the pump. We're going to be using this, basically. So it's like this, the, the purpose and control up there wants me to do this conversion, so it's really great. So um, that's really cool. So we're going to get this plugged in. Kieran's going to get it plugged in. And we're going to see how it's all completed. <laughs> Okay guys, so we're just about to connect up. We, we've sort of isolated what we think out of the discovery we don't need. I think next steps is finding good earth, finding what's what, and let's connect a jump pack up to it. That is gonna be positive for the fuse board. It goes through that, like that, earth, uh, power that. Send a pot, um, send a signal to the side to go boom. Was it Earth? I don't know, that one's giving me bad trouble, which way why that is. Okay guys, so the, I thought the standalone harness would have been easier to be honest, but then again, it's not because it, it has to actually still connect to the car. So a bit of head scratching with the wiring and I think we've got it all worked out. We've trimmed away most of the 300 TDI engine harness, the bits we don't need. We literally have, uh, this is for the dash binnacle. We've got individual wires to light up each individual lamp for things like um, the RPM, the battery light, the engine light. Uh, we still want to know if it's got any issues, etc. Um, we have the front pedal and OBD ports we can read into it and a clutch switch. We won't be running a clutch switch unless we need to. Um, all a clutch switch does is when you dip the clutch down, it lifts the revs up slightly. You can unplug it if you don't like that feature. Um, we have two positive battery terminals and a negative. ECU is plugged in, both harnesses are connected together, the body side and the engine side. The engine harness is fully installed apart from the air side. I'm actually really nervous. Um, we're not going to be able to crank it in this episode, which is a real shame because we're still waiting for those connections for the fuel tank. However, as a apology, if you will, an apology, I'm going to early next week release another video 
where we turn the key on this thing because we're a little bit away, stuff I need to do off camera, which is just slightly boring for you guys, like putting little push connectors on. So I'm gonna get those little bits sorted if you early next week. And I'm gonna join you sort of midweek next week, early next week. We're gonna turn this key and we're gonna hear this thing fire up. I am confident of that. But it's annoying we couldn't get it done in this episode, actually. But we've done so much in this episode, but it's annoying. It doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like it, that we have. We've done the whole standalone harness. We've done all the fuel lines. We've got most of the connectors done. We've worked out the Disco 1 loom. We've trimmed all that back. And we've done all sort of the welding on the fuel tank bracket. So we are minutes away from turning the key, but we just run out of time for this episode. But I would love to know your comments and thoughts. Please don't forget to drop them down in the comment section below. I really hope you're enjoying this build and I'm just trying to keep up with it and keep you guys entertained with this. So we're all still learning with this project. And uh, I hope to see you guys join us next week where we fire this thing up. And once it fires up, I can't see why we shouldn't be able to take this thing for a test drive. So it's gonna be interesting when the next one, 100%. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please give us a subscribe. Don't forget to tell us what you think down in the comment section below. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok, which is at Juice Motors. And we'll see you guys next time when this thing fires up 100%. Here we go. I'm just gonna show you something really cool about Discovery One. So common issue on a Discovery One, the handle gets stuck open, so you can't close it. Right, check this. Pop that in there, pop the logo off, see you later. Give your handle a little, little squirt in. Another little, whoop, whoop. That is amazing. Is that not cool? No, it's just simple engineering. Boy! <laughs> that would never happen on a Defender. No, that's quite cool. That would, they would never do that on a Defender. You can take out the badge, grease the handle. Genius. That's clever. That they thought about that these is, cars. That is, yeah. Because normally it feels like they never thought about actually having to maintain these. No, things. that's actually that's right on I like the that. Defenders. It's not like really easy to do. No, because the lock's here. Yeah. Yeah, but you've still got, a, you've still got the lock, haven't you? Yeah. But look, that's really, that's, I like that. That's thanks. Love it.